That's how we're describing this yeah, stuff. With risk. My bad. My bad. I know it's painful, but we will need a flat earth for your descriptions that you think relate to an axis of rotation that is described from a flat plane six times. We, that would be you, are describing motions of lights with respect to a flat plane. Welcome to flat earth. Earth is flat. Now, your orbital mechanics requires a plane of reference. When you describe with respect to the ball and its axis, that too requires a flat plane to describe. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> you need a flat Earth to describe these orbits. Yes. Yes. Welcome to flat Earth. <laughs> What do you think Saturn's rings are? I don't know. You a light me. in the sky. You tell of course me. You don't know because you want to assert a flat plane before you actually correctly make an assessment of what you're observing. I didn't. I didn't say anything. Oh, no, I said no, no, I don't no, no, know. No. Hold on. Hold on, Arwin. I said I don't know, and you tell me that I want to assert something when I say I don't know. A bit defensive, aren't you? Yeah, you say you don't know because there's no way to explain. You don't need to assume mechanics why I say that. You don't need to do that. You don't need to assume why I say I don't know. I'll tell you why, if you like. It's because I don't know what they are. He just said that well, you can't use so. so you can't know what it is. orbital mechanics. He just said you can't explain orbital mechanics using a flat plane when orbital mechanics, the elements of orbital mechanics, and the Keplerian elements, which are involved in that, require a plane of reference. And you're telling us that we, we need the, you need the plane more than we do. Yeah, I know, my bad. Yeah, so it's in reference to how we see things from the ground, then? I and just want to know what kind of orbital mechanics yeah, yeah, on a flat uh, Yeah, so it's in reference to how we see things from the ground, then? Yeah, we're not asserting a cause. We're pointing out that your description requires Earth to be flat. You have to like well, it. I'm interested we're in that. We're not making this as a positive claim. It's your positive claim that is utilizing a flat plane, and now you're denying it. I don't deny the two-dimensional horizontal plane perpendicular to the y-axis of a rotating body. I don't deny that. And you use that to describe orbital motions of stars that we see from the ground, correct? Yes, it is correct. You need a flat yeah. Earth to describe these orbits. Yes. Yes. Welcome to flat Earth. Yeah, but it's still a round yeah, ball but when you look no, at no, 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 not yeah, but yeah, we, that would be you, are describing motions of lights with respect to a flat plane. Welcome to flat Earth. Earth is flat. We observe different orientations of Saturn's rings that are wrapping around what appears to be a ball. Oh, that's really interesting. It appears, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, so even though there's a two-dimensional plane that everything is perpendicular to on that ball, that doesn't mean that Saturn's now a So you can't plane. be perpendicular it it on a ball? What are you talking about? With He's respect to the axis, things. we covered this. You'll need a flat Saturn Earth a to be with about. respect to an axis. You'll need a flat Earth for that too. We already covered that. You just rumpused us and talked through us because you didn't like the sound of it like you're about to do now. Yes, when you describe with respect to the ball and its axis, that too requires a flat plane to describe. Yeah. Yes, so <laughs> we're going to be describing everything ball-related, according to you, from a flat plane. I'm describing Saturn's rings, specifically. Yeah, and if you're going to be describing them with respect to their orbital motion, you'll be doing it with respect to a flat plane. And you're disrespecting the sphere that those flat planes are perpendicular to. Sorry, you can't be oh, perpendicular. perpendicular. <laughs> He's not listening, is he? Joe, you try. I tried twice. The you tried once. The rotating perpendicular. Body. Oh, pardon me, sir. Perpendicular is uh, 90 degrees to the vertical. Horizontal. Yeah, I know that. that's why I keep saying. Right? Yes. Okay, ninety yes. degrees. Ninety, not curving. You're not getting perpendicular on a sphere. 
Yes, I, I told him twice. He, That's did, not he, didn't, what I said. he didn't like it like now. He didn't want to hear it. Perpendicular to the y axis of the body. And we said to describe the axis of rotation will require a flat plane to describe it also. That is four times. Okay, we don't got to go through it again. Well, why don't you accept it? Because it means acceptance of I the fact that. I never denied it. Oh. I'm just saying it's rotating around a sphere. No, it isn't. The description of axial rotation oh. requires a flat plane to describe it. That is five times. Repeating it a sixth time won't alter the rebuttal you've heard five times and ignored. You're literally trying to alter reality that Saturn Am is I? not a sphere. Sorry, you think perpendicular is with respect to a curve? No, you are trying to alter reality perpendicular is with respect to a flat plane. That's how we're describing this yeah, stuff. With res my bad. My bad. I know it's painful, but we will need a flat Earth for your descriptions that you think relate to an axis of rotation that is described from a flat plane six times. Oh, I was just going to say, now he's going to try to take you to the center of the sphere to take the measurements, but you can only do the measurements with respect to the plane of reference. Therefore, the plane must be reference or bull. So he's going to take you to a place you can't reference to say that's your plane of reference. It's absurdity. You and didn't find a flaw production. in orbital mechanics. You just have a problem with it. We didn't, have a, we didn't describe a flaw. We described the necessity to use a flat plane. That's not describing flaws. It's describing necessities for a flat Earth. That flat plane is not a physical two-dimensional plane. That's not right. So happening. what are we using it for? We're back to this. Rinse and repeat. So we're not standing looking at stars and describing their motion with orbital mechanics anymore because you lose. And to do this, we will reference a flat Earth. Therefore, we're not doing it with reference to anything like the last guy. Now, you've taken six round around do -si dos Are you going to run away like the last guy too? You can see the orientation of Saturn's rings change over the years. Uh, yes. Indicating that it is not two-dimensional. And? Uh, so it absolutely is. You don't have binocular vision to the stars. So you think Saturn's two-dimensional? I said, and I will repeat, you do not have binocular vision to the stars. Do you understand what that means? Yes. So they are absolutely, so they are absolutely yeah. without question two-dimensional? You are wrong. So Saturn is 2D to you? You have not got... But do we need to do this seven times too? Are you slow? Do we no, need to repeat this a second forward. time? You've acknowledged, but you don't have binocular vision to it. Do you understand that you said yes? Now you're repeating it like, am I suggesting right, it's not three-dimensional? What, with my binocular vision, I've got to confirm that? No, I've already overcome this twice, but you seem to feel the need to talk through the second rendition of it why? Because it's painful. We're highlighting how your orbital mechanics needs a flat Earth. You're then going to go to the stars and tell me that they are definitely 3D when you don't have binocular vision to them. Yeah, Saturn is an object. It's three-dimensional. Uh, what, when you don't have binocular vision to it? It's appealing to the study of nature. Oh, right. And what study did they do? They studied the orientation of Saturn's rings over the years. All right, that's a phenomena, is it? Yeah. You're saying the orientation cool. of the rings of Saturn yeah, is something studied by physicists, claim. and I don't need to be talked through while I summarise the point you're making that you can clearly detect is going to get ripped apart immediately. You don't need to rumpus me summarising your garbage. I let you speak, bro. Why, thank you. Yeah, I don't need to do anything else other than say you need a flat plane for every single claim you've made here. Yeah, you're not right, referencing the, the same about flat plane, which is imaginary. You're not referencing Earth when you're looking at Saturn's rings. Is it not going to be described with orbital mechanics by you after we look at the stars and describe how we see them from the ground? Have we not covered this already? I'm pretty sure we have. You're not measuring from Saturn to give you the description of the orbital mechanics of Saturn's rings, right? We're talking about the bodies as they move through the celestial dome or celestial sphere. We're talking about those motions and how they relate. Now, your orbital mechanics requires a plane of reference in order to describe that. And then if you want to move it out to Saturn after you've utilized the plane of reference to just try to describe how Saturn's rings works, more power to you. But you started 
with a plane of reference. Yeah, yeah. Your position on that plane of reference. You know, you can have a horizontal on a ball, right? Like when we're measuring like, angles, yeah. we would acquire their position, their elevation, with respect to a horizontal line of reference. A globe won't give you that. I think what he's trying to say is you can take a level and set it on top of a ball, but it'll only intersect that ball at one point. But that's that's irrelevant to the point, because if you're going to say surface level is curving, you can't use earth curve mathematics to assert there's a tangent there, because within the mathematics itself, surface level is a horizontal plane. So no, you're wrong.